Hi and welcome to this week's video on Madeline's Magic. This week's topic is alfalfa, also known as Medicago sativa. Alfalfa, also called lucerne, is a perennial flowering plant in the legume family Fabricacea, which normally lives four to eight years but can live more than 20 years depending on variety and climate. Money so tall that my baby's got a climate, harder than the Middle Eastern climate, why ain't it? That they whine it. I'm up so one drop. Why not? Now, really, really, I don't give a F a U C K. Forget Barbie. Fuck Nikki. She's fake. Anyway. Although it is technically part of the legume family, it is also considered a herb. The plant grows up to a height of one meter and has a deep root system. Owing to this deep root system, it helps to improve soil nitrogen fertility and protect from soil erosion. This depth of root system and perenniality of crowns that store carbohydrates as an energy reserve make it very resilient, especially to droughts. It is cultivated as an important forage crop in many countries around the world. It is used for grazing, hay and silage, as well as green manure and cover crop. Alfalfa is native to warmer temperature climates. It has been cultivated as livestock fodder since at least the era of the ancient Greeks and Romans. Alfalfa seems to have originated in South Central Asia and was first cultivated in ancient Iran. According to Pliny the Elder, it was introduced to Greece in about 490 BC when the Persians invaded Greek territory. Pliny and other academics of the time called alfalfa in Latin medica a name that referred to the Medes, a people who lived in ancient Iran. The ancient Greeks and Romans believed that alfalfa came from the Medes land in today's Iran. A 13th century Arabic dictionary says that alfalfa is cultivated as an animal feed and consumed in both fresh and dry forms. The name alfalfa comes from the Arabic al fakar which means father of all foods. So that should tell you a little bit about the importance of this herb. In the 16th century, Spanish colonizers introduced alfalfa to the Americans as fodder for their horses. Its primary use is as feed for dairy cows because of its high protein content and highly digestible fiber. Secondary, for beef cattle, horses, sheep and goats. Lucerne is the name for alfalfa in Britain, Australia, France, Germany and a number of other countries. Alfalfa seeds were imported to California from Chile in the 1850s. That was the beginning of a rapid and extensive introduction of the crop over the western US states and introduced the word alfalfa to the English language. Since North and South America now produce a large part of the world's output, the word alfalfa has been slowly entering other languages. Alfalfa hay is widely used protein and fibre source for meat rabbits. In poultry diets, dehydrated alfalfa and alfalfa leaf concentrates are used for pigmenting eggs and meat because of their high content in carotenoids which are efficient for colouring egg yolk and body lipids. Humans also eat alfalfa sprouts in salads and sandwiches. Dehydrated alfalfa leaf is commercially available as a dietary supplement in several forms, such as tablets, powders and tea. Alfalfa is also considered an insectary, a place where insects are reared, and has been proposed as helpful to other crops, such as cotton, if the two are interplanted, because the alfalfa harbours predatory and parasitic insects that would protect the other crop. Alfalfa seed production requires the presence of pollinators when the fields of alfalfa in bloom. Alfalfa pollination is somewhat problematic, however, because western honeybees, the most commonly used pollinator, are less than ideal for this purpose. The pollen-carrying keel of the alfalfa flower trips and strikes pollinating bees on the head, which helps transfer the pollen to the foraging bee. Western honeybees, however, do not like being struck in the head repeatedly and learn to defeat this action by drawing nectar from the side of the flower. Clever little bees. The bees thus collect the nectar but carry no pollen, so do not pollinate the next flower they visit. Because older experienced bees do not pollinate alfalfa well, most pollination is accomplished by young bees that have not yet learned the trick of getting the nectar without tripping the head knocking keel. That's a bit of a mouthful to say, head knocking keel. Today the alfalfa leaf cutter bee is increasingly used to circumvent these problems. As a solitary but gregarious bee species, it does not build colonies or store honey, but it is a very efficient pollinator of alfalfa flowers. 
They nest in individual tunnels burrowed into soil or in wood or plastic materials supplied by the farmers. The leafcutter bees are used in the Pacific Northwest, while western honeybees dominate in Californian alfalfa seed production. Alfalfa, like other leguminous crops, is a known source of phytoestrogens, including spinesterol, cumesterol, and cumestan. Because of this, grazing on alfalfa during breeding can reduce fertility in sheep and in dairy cattle if not effectively managed. Phytoestrogens can play a big part in human fertility as well. Moving on to the medicinal uses. Alfalfa has a high content of bioactive plant compounds, including sapo saponins, coumarins, flavonoids, phytosterols, phytoestrogens, and alkaloids. It is a good source of vitamin K and also contains other nutrients, including vitamin C, copper, manganese, and folate. Numerous animal studies have shown that alfalfa can lower total cholesterol, LDL bad cholesterol, and try glyceride levels while increasing HDL good cholesterol, which may decrease heart disease risks. The cholesterol lowering effect of alfalfa is attributed to its high content of saponins, which are the plant compounds. There is a long list of traditional uses of alfalfa as a medicinal herb. They include lowering blood pressure, acting as a diuretic, increasing breast milk production, treating arthritis and getting rid of kidney stones. Most of these proposed health benefits have not been extensively researched, however a few of them have been studied to some extent. One traditional use of alfalfa is as an anti-diabetic or blood sugar lowering agent. Several animal studies have found that alfalfa appears to improve cardiometabolic health by decreasing blood fat and blood sugar levels. Alfalfa has a long history of use in Ayurvedic medicine to treat conditions caused by inflammation and oxidative damage. Indeed, alfalfa has some powerful antioxidant properties, as some animal studies have noted that it prevents oxidative stress damage caused by free radicals. Alfalfa and alfalfa sprouts are high in vitamin K. Although this benefits most people, it can be dangerous for others. High doses of vitamin K can cause blood thinning medications, such as warfarin, to be less effective. Therefore, it's important for people taking these medications to avoid big changes in their vitamin K intake. There have been reported cases of alfalfa supplements causing reactivation of lupus in some people. This effect is believed to be due to possible immune stimulating effects of the amino acid L-cabinine which is found in alfalfa. Therefore, those who have lupus or some other autoimmune disorders are advised to avoid it. Now onto the magical uses! Yay! Alfalfa is an ancient herb and has long been used in prosperity magic. It is used for health, prosperity and good fortune. Usually the herb is added to spells and charms in its dried form. As a luck bringing herb, alfalfa is often assigned to Jupiter, but also to Venus. It signifies happiness and satisfaction in life. Being the favorite food of cattle, it is therefore assigned to the zodiac sign of Taurus. It's primarily a money magic herb and corresponds to the elemental of earth. Gamblers can carry a sachet of alfalfa in their pocket for good luck. The same charm inspires others to be generous to you. You can dress a green candle with alfalfa leaves for use in a money drawing spell. Keeping a jar of dried alfalfa in the kitchen cupboard ensures your household will always have enough to eat. Alfalfa leaf can be used in money spells of any kind. It is useful for all positive financial goals, securing a bank loan, winning prize money or growing a business. A sprinkle of alfalfa in your wallet is supposed to help you keep hold of your last pound. It is used by hoodoo practitioners as a herb for attracting money as well as for asset protection. There we go! And that's alfalfa ladies and gents! Thanks for staying with me today, thanks for tuning in! <laughs> Feeling a bit fruity today as you can tell. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!